Hello, I am David Elkind, and in this film I would like to share with you some principles that, in my experience, lead to sound educational practice. The work of Jean Piaget has added greatly to our knowledge about the science of teaching, and thus indirectly to the art of teaching. Margie Wan teaches a self-contained first grade in an inner city school in California. Her 29 students speak five different languages at home. Jeanette Amidon teaches 20 first graders in a suburban school in Massachusetts. The children in her class speak four different languages. First, we will look at the learning environment, including the physical environment and the classroom organization. Then we will look at four principles which I believe should be included in classroom practice. I can stand From a Piagetian point of view, learning is a creative activity. The child always takes something of himself or herself and something from the environment and puts them together to construct a product that is new, a product that cannot be reduced to either the child or to the environment. The first task of the teacher, therefore, is to create a learning environment that is both attractive and supportive of the child's learning. The end point is the ability to use rules in flexible and open ways, discarding unnecessary ones and creating fresh ones for new situations. Can you go read to some more boys and girls? At the school, teacher, what happened to your pencil? I not uh, You were scribbling. And yeah, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, I You're in charge of your pencil. House. Now, I'd like to turn to four principles which I believe are basic to effective classroom teaching. The first of these I call fluency precedes accuracy. Sue, is this a story you want to publish? Yeah. Could you read it to me? They got trick or and they got a lot of candy. That's a good story, Sue. Can we put the title on it? Have you got a title for it? The most important thing is for the artist to have something concrete to work with, not a finished product. Good writing is always rewriting, and that principle holds true for all of the arts. Can you read it for me? Good for you, Sue. We're ready to go to publishing. Now, I'd like to turn to the next principle. That is, that children process information differently at each stage of development. From about the age of six or seven to about the age of 11 or 12, the concrete operational period, children can operate upon concrete classes and relations, but not abstract ones. And what about Halloween? Do you know where that comes from, the history of that? Mexico. Hmm. Okay. And, and what about uh, um, Valentine's Day? What about, do you know where that comes from, how we, how we came to celebrate that? A long time ago, I know. <laughs> A long time ago. Now, I'd like to turn to the third principle, which is that horizontal elaboration precedes vertical integration. The same is true with mathematics. We need to give children a lot of experience with, say, coins and many different uh, denominations before we move on to different unit quantities. I want now to turn to our last principle, and that is that documentation is really the best method of assessing pupil progress. When we view learning as a creative activity, the best measure of a child's progress is a portfolio of his or her own work. In this film, and in others in the series, we hope that we've provided you with some new insights and options that you can take back to your classrooms. We have just received a news update. Coffee is free, escorted by 25 rescuers made up of Coast Guard vessels and private boats. Humphrey swam under the Golden Gate Bridge and headed toward the open Pacific Ocean.